Welcome back. Uh, following on the fire assessment, I am going to expand a little bit on the concept of the stress uh, associated with the uh, post-COVID-19 uh, virus um, because it's, I think it's highly Im important and relevant to understand what is really happening due to this virus. Here is a related article which you can access for your own convenience. So while all turnaround situations are particular, they are specific to the specific business, there are basically three things that we have to consider and while we will focus on only two of them. And that is the resource munificence, which is mostly seen in the scarcity of resources and the causality of the problem. What created the problem? What drove the business into the hole. That is the causality that we are interested in. Although management is a very important part of all of this, it depends on how they interpret those two elements most of the time. So remember particularity. Every business is specific and that is a key thing that you have to consider. A, bus a business normally falls into one of the four quadrants as determined by this uh, preconditions matrix, where we look at uh, them when a business is performing well, it probably has sufficient resources, and it, if it has problems, it's minor internal problems. More important is this one where the resources become scarce and the business is in the state of underperformance as a turnaround situation, and their problems are in internal and operational, mostly in capacity. Maybe it is the inability of management to see what's going on, understand it, make the right decisions and so forth. But the business is performed poorly. The third one is more difficult, much more difficult, the strategic distress turnaround situation where the business might have resources, but suddenly it doesn't have a market anymore. And it's determined by external factors typically associated with these effects that we now see from the COVID, for example. And then finally, the crisis situation where you don't have resources now, you probably won't have resources in the future, nobody will put new resources in, and your problems are external in nature. Uh, again, uh, mostly uh, seen in the effect of the demand that has been lost. Let me quickly expand on the concept of causality trying to uh, determine the origin and the reason for the distress of a business. So that we said can come from internal or external sources. Internal uh, involves self-made problems, a relative control of the management that they have not applied. Uh, the effect is that of the decisions from the management. And it's mostly to do with problems associated with efficiency, uh, and uh, production in the short term and the immediate performance of the business where con external causality is from the outside environment changing rules that's taking place maybe in legislation or how things are being done uh, we talk about disruption um, requires us to react so you don't have control. Internal you have control, external you don't have control. So the external ones impact uh, on the survival of the firm short and long term. And the next slide I will give a quick example. So as an example, I'm looking quickly at uh, Starbucks in 2008 when the share price dropped from like $93 to I think 13 if I can remember correctly. But it was a massive drop. And investigating their problems and understanding their business suggested the following, that they were pursuing a growth strategy of five stores per day. They targeted to have 20,000 uh, shops or outlets uh, in America as 20,000 in the rest of the world. They were cannibalizing their own business by having two, three and four uh, shops on the same corner. They pursued optimization and they tried to uh, dominate the market by visible locations and uh, pursuing a competitive advantage. 
And apparently there was very little competition. But then in at the same time in 2008, uh, we had the economic downturn. And uh, they then suffered uh, this drop in uh, the share price. So the external environment was that they were selling a, not coffee, but a romantic product, a romance with coffee. Uh, they had focused differentiation. They did not consider price. And then the rules changed. And suddenly McDonald's came in with a $1 coffee. Uh, Dunkin' Donut uh, expanded with their drive throughs And there was this economic squeeze. And there was a big turnaround in the external situation, which made it very difficult for them. So all I'm trying to show you is the internal decisions and the external things that happened outside of their control that they had to respond to. So let's look at the four turnaround situations and give uh, some info on the elements that make up the preconditions for each. When we look at underperformance, then we normally would say that there is still a demand for sales. The pressure is on contribution markets, so profitability. The capacity is not utilized properly, uh, normally under capacity. There is a pressure on the so-called competitive advantage. And productivity is relatively low and the business becomes cash trapped. Uh, it doesn't have sufficient cash all the time. The second one of importance is the strategic distress, which is much more difficult, where we have outside factors of dwindling sales, market share that is lost, the competitive advantage is lost, there's a change in the demand, it can happen quickly, it can happen slowly, there are competitive products coming in, suddenly there's inventory growth, uh, you can't sell all your products, and the expense ratios increase. In the crisis situation, which is just a worst case scenario of the strategic distress anyway, there's a rapidly dwindling sales. The uh, world of demand is disrupted. Um, market share is totally lost. There's no competitive advantage left. Demand changed completely and the business is seriously cash trapped and resource trapped. And one would normally think that those are the ones that determine the conditions, but it is also possible for companies which are performing well to experience turnaround situations. Well, they have good demand, they might have sufficient market share, but then suddenly there might be small things coming in, which is often associated with a concept of overtrading, where people spend a lot of money on creating capacity, which cannot be used immediately. So those are the four were the elements in each of those. So normally to respond to a turnaround situation, it's not necessarily always one thing that you do. You would do a number of things depending on your situation that you are in. So for example, if we are in this uh, uh, performing well, your ideal strategy is to sustain your performance. And those would then be supported by several practices, which I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. We can pursue sales, uh, penetrate new markets, seek new alternative markets, or go deeper into the market that you are in. Um, if we look at underperformance, you must pursue an efficiency strategy, mostly, which will involve practices like protecting and improving your competitive advantage. Normally, there's a lot of cost cutting involved, big five uh, focus, um, capacity improvements, to generate cash, outsource certain uh, elements uh, or, or that are non-essential to the business and so forth. With the strategic uh, distress, you are forced to reposition. This is much more difficult because it has a hint of new or alternative business. So you have to revise your strategy through a critique process. Uh, you have to find alternative revenue streams, maybe new products, other markets, different markets. And you are forced to innovate and differentiate yourself or maybe acquire another business that uh, you can pursue in order to address your strategic distress. 
And then finally, the last resort strategy is when you have nothing left, where we spoke about earlier of brawls and things. Uh, you can maybe do a defensive merger. You can divest certain portions of your company or your products or your portfolios. Liquidation is also a possibility. And the one that I never knew about that the banks told me about was the to ask for debt forgiveness, which is a possibility, uh, but it's not an easy option that one can pursue. So those are your practices under each of the strategies that you pursue to address a specific turnaround situation. In this slide, I just want to share with you the possibilities and to understand what is the effect of a recession, for example, or a disruptor on a company, depending on where they are. We see that uh, normally in a recession or with a disruptor, the forces are going driving towards the right-hand side. Okay, it, But it is also a case of possible for you to see that it drives you to resource scarcity. Um, so it's a drive towards the right, drive towards the bottom of the picture in order to understand what are the effects of such a recession on a business.